Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. Tis recorded in His Word. Hallelujah. Tis only that you look and leave. Apostle, you have no idea what is happening in my life right now. It's on account of my faith in Jesus that I'm in this trouble right now. Look to Jesus. Hallelujah. To depend upon him psalm 1 2 3 from verse 1 and 2 1 23 1 and 2 the bible says unto thee lift i up mine eyes O thou that dwellest in the heavens verse 2 it says behold as the eyes of the servant look upon the hand of their masters it says and as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of her mistress so our eyes wait upon thee O lord until that he have mercy upon us. Can I tell you? There's no time, but probably let me just give you three scriptures that helps us to know why should you look unto Jesus. Number one is found in Psalm 127. I hope I've not lost you. We're still looking at the first reason or the first recommendation from scripture to look to Jesus. Psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2 says, except the lord builds a house i am showing you why you need to look unto jesus that they labor in vain that build it and except the lord keepeth the city the watchmen walketh but in vain verse 2 says it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow for he giveth his beloved sleep why do we need to look unto Jesus? Romans chapter 9 and verse 16. It says, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. That means no matter what else you do, you can stretch your human imagination from border to border. If God does not show you mercy, everything you are doing will end up being moving around in circles. Hallelujah. Why do we need to look unto Jesus? Psalm 62 and verse 11. I have spoken once and twice have ye heard that power belongeth to God. When you look unto Jesus, you are looking unto the only person, the only God who has the power to do something about your situation. My Bible tells me some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. It says, but we will trust in the name of our God. This is true. Men can want to help. They may be sincere on that, but do they have the power? Hallelujah. Someone say, look unto Jesus. Let me give you one more scripture. Why do you need to look unto Jesus? At times of adversary, at times of pain Psalm 133 from verse 1 behold how good and how pleasant it is Psalm 113 my apologies 113 113 113 praise ye the Lord praise ye his serv the servants of the Lord praise the name of the Lord verse 2 it says blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forever verse 3 it says from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the name of the lord is to be praised and uh how -huh. we're reading to verse 9 the lord is high above all the nations and his glory above the heavens watch this now it says who is like unto the lord our god who dwelleth on high verse 6 who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and are in earth seven who raised the poor i'm showing you why you need to look unto jesus God is the only one who can raise men, the poor, out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. That he may set him to sit with princes, even the princes of his people. Verse 9, he maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother 
of children. This is what he can do. When you look unto Jesus, it may sound like foolishness in the midst of challenges. Because there are many times I have taught you here, when God is silent, the most difficult phase in the believer's life is when God is silent. Even though he is the word, there are times God is mysteriously silent. And I've taught you that the silence of God is also a language. You must know what God is saying when he's not speaking. Because when God is not speaking, he's saying something. Look unto Jesus. Now, let me give you a word of caution. We're looking at five keys. And the Spirit of God had to put it in my heart to write this down. According to Matthew 11 and verse 6, it says, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Can I tell you? If you've not had the temptation to be offended in God, it's either you are really a baby or you've not lived long enough on this earth because there are moments in your life when you feel it's, it's almost as if you feel cheated for loving Jesus are we together yeah John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah watch this John was the prophet who ordained Jesus to ministry it was revealed to John. John had the secret code that would identify Jesus. When he saw Jesus by prophecy, he said, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Now John is locked up, caught see Herodias, the daughter, as a birthday gift. He was locked up and was about to be beheaded in anger. When the disciples came to him, you know what he said? The same person who identified Jesus, who announced him, he said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? That is what offense can do. The man who ordained Jesus in ministry, in fact, he trained some of the disciples who would later be the disciples of Jesus. And yet he said, Jesus, for I, I've, my pain vetoes every vision I have about you. My pain vetoes anything God told me about you. I am in a moment of pain. You claim to be the Messiah and now I am locked up in prison and you do not even have the courtesy to come and visit me. I hear a rumor that as a birthday gift, my head is going and you do not even show any sign of concern. Take that message to your Jesus. The disciples come to Jesus in a crusade ground. And says, sir, we don't mean to embarrass you, but there's a serious situation. The man who announced you most, the man who cried out and said he was the voice who was sent to bear witness to you, is in total doubt of you right now. What can destroy a man's ministry more than somebody who loved you and endorsed you openly? And is now saying, go, I'm not even sure of what I laid hands on. And the Bible says, Jesus... With calmness and intelligence, he turned and began to lay hands, healed a few people. He said, go and tell John what you see. The blind see, the deaf hear, and so on and so forth. The gospel is preached. Then he says, 11 verse 6 now, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Lord, where were you when I was losing my job? Where were the angels of protection when my loved one was being attacked by terrorists or died in a car crash? I don't mean to get you emotional, but I'm just, I'm discussing on the afflictions of the righteous. Lord, where were you when for the sake of my integrity as a man of God, I seem to have gone down? Where were you when Potiphar's wife was all around Joseph and because of his integrity, he didn't go to the palace, he went to the prison. The afflictions of the righteous. How do you explain Joseph holding a woman's, uh, the wife's, um, what they call it now? Her veil or whatever it is he was holding. How could he say that he did not have anything to do with her? That was evidence enough. And yet God was watching in heaven. How do you explain Hannah crying year after year? going to Shiloh. How do you explain that? How do you explain God's people under the rule and bondage of the Egyptians? 
many are the afflictions of the righteous let me tell you this the believer is not a believer because of results the believer is a believer because you have committed yourself to trust in Jesus hallelujah look unto Jesus is the first biblical recommendation I've had very painful experiences in the lives of people as I as I serve the purposes of God and sometimes you know when they can't see Jesus you who is the closest to him based on what they perceive whatever they would have told him is what they tell you hallelujah since I cannot see Jesus you claim to be the one who has come in his name you better be prepared to help me convey to Jesus and I will tell you loud and clear where was he when this happened I know many people who I called in maybe the face of bereavement and whatever and I say can we say a word of prayer and they say apostle with all due respect please do not talk to me about anything prayer now and I know that they don't mean it it's just what pain can do hallelujah I heard about the story of someone who had an accident and he had to rush out and he stood watching his car burn and it burned to ashes there was absolutely nothing he would have done and that was a car that was like two months old what was the value of dedicating the car in church they poured oil on that car and it still burnt after two months how about the business of believers that went down from COVID and some of those people were great sponsors of the gospel now just follow me I'm a good pilot who will land well you just follow me hallelujah mm. how about a man of God who gathered sick people and shouted in the name of the Lord that they will be healed and laid hands on them one by one till they arrested him and threw him out of that place and he left that crusade ground as if he was living a funeral where is the Jesus I kept shouting and talking about let me tell you ladies and gentlemen I'm not just playing with words nor am I playing with your mind I'm revealing something that may be someone's situation right now and you know in the midst of challenges you forget every title you have you forget every even Jesus wept very disturbing scripture John 11 35 if you see Jesus weeping will you not cry too that means you are in trouble John 11 35 the comforter of those who were always weeping is now weeping it doesn't matter why he's weeping the fact that you saw tears coming out of his eyes hallelujah life wept hope wept victory wept the fountain of wisdom wept weeping always carries a a picture of limitation when people weep it seems to communicate hopelessness or despair and the bible says jesus wept as god he never cried but when he became a man he cried jesus was angry the bible does not hide his frustrations he went into the temple and flogged people in anger he caused a fig tree because he was hungry and came to the tree and the tree would not deliver and he caused that tree look to Jesus listen to me there will be moments in your life where you truly will not be able to find answers intellectually that's why there is a realm of peace that surpasses all understanding that means that peace is beyond the realm of arguing what is this what is that remember at the apex of 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 job's problem the wife was even confused she said curse god and die and job said no why do you speak like one of these foolish women he said all the days of my appointed time i will wait i don't know what is happening to me different people came and started communicating several opinions and Ellie who one time shot them and he said you guys I respect you I wanted to speak but I have a limitation in age he said but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty make it men of understanding 
Job himself, who encouraged himself in the Lord, got to a point where he was angry. And when you read chapter 38, the Bible said he summoned God. He said, God, I've finished comforting myself. We need to talk. Please come and explain to me the reason behind this pain. And the Bible says God came in a whirlwind and a discussion began. Hallelujah. Look unto Jesus. Number two. Depend on him. Number two now. Let me give you number two. Commit to prayer. Even in the midst of pain. Even in the midst of hopelessness. Even in the midst of despair. Commit to prayer. That is the second point. James chapter 5 and verse 13. James 5 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray, the Bible says. Let him pray. When you see afflictions, you see despair, you see all kinds of things. He says to pray. It is difficult to pray when you are in pain. That is where spirituality is tested. Lord, I do not know what is happening, but I pray. I pray. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 It says pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Someone say prayer. Shout it again. Say prayer. Prayer. prayer is very, very powerful. When you do not know what to do, pray. It is in the place of prayer that direction comes. When you do not know what to do, pray. Pray even in the spirit. Pray in your understanding. I don't know where the solution to these bills will come from. There is already a death sentence around my life and my children health wise. You do not know what to do. Pray. The Bible says the biblical recommendation for managing affliction is to pray. Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. It does not take a certificate to pray. It takes hunger and passion and the recognition that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. Say pray. pray. Commit to prayer. That is the second biblical key. Every time you do not know what is happening in your life, that is not the time to start running from pillar to post, discussing things with people who don't have the power to solve your problem. Can I tell you the truth? Running around will only deplete the energy that is left. Use that same energy, lock the door, and begin to pray. And sometimes, you honestly may not know how to pray. You may allow your tears do the prayer. And while you sing, or you may allow prayer to just come from any material while you soak in the glory there pray 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 I thought I would get the job now this is the 10th year 15th year 5th year without a job pray someone in the hospital has already said forget about me just focus on the children as for me I am going pray Listen to what I'm telling you and please take it seriously. Pray. Man of God, since pandemic, it looks like your ministry just went down. The key is to pray. Discussion may be consoling, but you have to pray. You can pray yourself to comfort. You can pray yourself to faith. Prayer is like exercise. Nobody likes it, but you have to start. Once you start, something happens to you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to Most people will do any other thing but pray they will cry which is human and which is okay but they will not pray prayer has nothing to do with um, whether you have the appetite and the desire it is a requirement you must pray number three let's hurry up is God speaking to someone Number one, look to Jesus, meaning depend on him even when you do not understand him. The word trust is the word bata, trust in the Lord. That means to throw yourself at him, expecting him to hold you. 
and like the Hebrew boys that even if you do not deliver us oh king we have made a determination that as far as Jesus as far as God is concerned we will not bow that's why you see conditional Christianity is dangerous the kind of Christianity that says God I will only serve you based on the fact that you bless me no God is a covenant keeping God but our love for Jesus and our love for the things of the spirit must be beyond the results that come that even if i'm in the midst of fire and rescue does not come let it be that i die trusting him are we together number three what is the third approach to dealing with afflictions as a believer are you ready meditate upon and speak the word over that situation meditate upon and speak the word over that situation meditate upon and speak the word over that situation joel chapter 3 and verse 10 joel chapter 3 and verse 10 joel joel j-o-e-l chapter 3 and verse 10 it says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. It says, let the weak say. Hold on. Where do you have the strength to say when you are weak? There is always strength to say, even when there is no strength to do. You may not have the strength to do, but God will always ensure that the strength to say remains with you. That when you lose every kind of strength, there is within your spirit man the strength to say. The strength to say gives you the strength to do. Let the weak say. Let those who are crying say. Let those who are discouraged say. That means in the mind of God, there is no situation that happens to the believer that should make him lose the ability to say there is always strength enough to say let the weak say i am strong he never said let the weak say strength i am strong to personalize it and to believe it let the weak say i am strong isaiah 3 and verse 10 Isaiah 3 and verse 10 say unto the righteous the same righteous with many afflictions he said say to that righteous that it shall be well with him someone say it must be well with me in fact say it is well with me prophesy to yourself say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that it is well with me don't mind what the devil is saying say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that it is well with me say unto the righteous that it shall be well with them yes I know I will come out of this let the weak say I am strong let the person in debt say I will come out of it in the name of Jesus because thanks be to God that causes us to triumph say unto the one who has lost the breadwinner in their family father is gone mother is gone and you are alone I may not see wind I may not see rain but one thing I know is that my valley shall be filled with water because there is Abba the one who never dies and the Bible says that if he can cloth the lilies of the valley and feed the birds that do not sow and do not reap they are violating a fundamental spiritual law yet in needs they never lack hallelujah meditate on and speak the word can I tell you when you learn to speak the word is not a Pentecostal suggestion speaking the word is part of the frame do you know God is very powerful and he has taught us the Bible says he created us in his image and in his likeness his likeness means to function like him and all through scripture we see God create by speaking he blesses by speaking he restores by speaking he lifts by speaking every time God opens his mouth something leaves his mouth that ministers life to creation the Bible says even for man that he breathed upon that man to breathe upon the man does not mean he used his nose he opened his mouth and life came and entered into that man are we together speak the word Psalm 107 from verse 2 and 3 
Psalm 107 from verse 2 and 3. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the lifted of the Lord say so. It's not enough to know so. You must say so. Whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Verse 3. It says, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and the north and the south. Say so. Say so. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of this situation. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? I may not understand what is happening to me, but in the name of Jesus, the Bible says all things work together for my good. I expect glory at the end of this confusion. I may not know what the process is all about, but I know the end. That the end is glory and is glorious. And upon that, I place my faith. Learn to say so. Learn to say so. You don't say what is happening. You say what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Is someone learning? That means as you return back now, you can carry whatever is the, is the basis for the challenge, the affliction, whatever it is. You continue to make declarations. Even if it looks like it's a hopeless situation, like death, because the most... Um, the, the, the most hopeless thing that can happen to a man as far as this side of God's kingdom is concerned is that the person passes on to glory. So physically you may not see the person again. Even at that, you may not have the person back again but you can decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I know that the comfort of the spirit is at work in this family. It may be a difficult thing but by the power of the Holy Spirit with each passing day strength is released upon us and whatever role that person played in the name of Jesus God will come through. God will raise men in multiplied ways to play that role. See, there is a way the believer was designed to function. When you allow emotions to drive the vehicle of your Christian life, you will end up being a disaster. Sincerely so. You will need to push emotions aside and peg yourself at the word of God. No matter what you feel, that which God said, you must say. Are we together? The word confession comes from the word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. And the purpose of repeating it is for creation, not just for emphasis. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Is someone learning already? I'm giving you biblical keys. Number one, I said, look unto Jesus, depend totally upon him. Number two, commit to prayer. Number three, meditate upon and speak the word of God over that situation. Over that situation. Because every situation has an ear. And believe me when I tell you, it can hear the word of the Lord. Are you ready for number, number four? Now listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Number four, seek comfort, prayer, and help from friends and the family of believers i will take it slowly seek comfort the righteous now in the midst of affliction seek comfort comma prayer and help from godly friends and from the family of believers this is you can start this because it is a very major secret to overcoming affliction Seek comfort, prayers, and help from friends and the family of believers. In Acts chapter 4, when we read from verse 21, please give us Acts chapter 4 and verse 21. Remember when Peter and John were threatened as a result of the man at Get Beautiful who had been healed? So when they had further threatened them, it says they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Next verse. It says, For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. 23. And being let go, they went to their own company. Everybody said their own company. So they had a larger community of believers where they could resort to, to find company. The Bible says, and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had done. And together as a company, 
verse 24 now the bible says when they heard the company they lifted their voice say they not just the one person he came to a company of believers and they could find comfort they could pray together they lifted up their voice unto god with one accord listen many believers do not survive afflictions and tragedies and negative situations because they lack these four points many believers do not have a larger company of friends and like-minded believers did you know it is a terrible thing for a believer to not be connected to a larger body of believers because when when disaster strikes like this no matter how powerful you are you will need the company of believers to shield you and encourage you there are times the sermon you hear will not come from yourself it will come from someone else speaking to you are we learning first thessalonians 5 and verse 25 it said brethren pray for us there are times that as much as you may want to pray for yourself, you may not have that energy. But there should be some brethren that you can honestly say pray for us. Even though we are apostles, do you have the brethren that can pray for you? Do you have the brethren that can love you, that can come and shield you? Hallelujah. Philippians 1.19. Philippians 1.19. For I know, Paul is speaking, that this shall turn to my salvation. How? Through your prayer. Paul, the prayer warrior, is saying, I require the prayer and the shield of other believers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. For this fourth point, I wrote something very interesting here and I please want you to listen. I said, living an isolated Christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity living an isolated Christian life hallelujah an isolated Christian life in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 when you read from verse 9 to 12 it talks about the power of unity two are better than one it says because they have a good reward for their labor reading to verse 12 for if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he had not another to help him up it says and again if two lie together then they have heat but how can one be warm alone verse 12 now it says and if one prevail against him it says two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not easily broken living an isolated christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity can i tell you having brethren having godly friends and having a family of believers who love you and know you and support you will require you sowing seeds of love sowing seeds of care and sowing seeds of help to believers too you have to make those investments waiting for these days now let me tell you the truth the proof of your being connected to a spiritual family is not attendance is genuine connection connection that is proven by service and your own impute also attendance does not mean you have a spiritual family have you registered your impact by registering your love by registering your care who knows you are there who has been a beneficiary of your kindness there are many people who attend believer meetings, but nobody knows them enough to come and knock on their door and say, I heard that you have been crying for the past two days. You have blessed me too much. I will not leave this place. Your home is my home. Your tears is my tears. Let me tell you, woe betides a man who has not spent his life investing and sowing seeds of love, seeds of kindness, because you will find, do you know, there are believers who go through pain and they go through it alone because they have not made any commitment to anyone nor any spiritual family enough no track record of service no track record of giving no track record of prayer no track record of support they just freelance participation unfortunately for those people who betides that believer do you know there are many believers who have cheaply come out of affliction because of the power of a larger body of believers why is your face gloomy like this? 
I've not been able to pay my rent. I'm not an irresponsible person. It's just that things have been happening in my life. How much is the rent? Ah, I'm even afraid to say it. It's 1.5 million. And you may not even know the person you are talking to. You will say, come and see me tomorrow. You thought he would give you rent. He will give you the key of a house and say, I have watched you. Every time when it's time to collect offering, I see your service in the house of God. I, you always have that smile, that glow when people are sad. I've taught you that challenges are as large as the ignorance of the victims. You see, invest in strategic relationships. There are many of you who will not call on anybody. When you hear that people are sick, it's none of your business. When you hear that someone is in trouble, it's none of, once it does not affect you, it is none of your business. No. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. And you'll be making investments and you will be surprised. Moments where you need help, the body will come and wrap their hands around you and say, no, let that sword pierce us instead of touching you. You have made too much commitment. There was a woman in the Bible, remember? That some, a woman who died in the Bible and people came and said, look at what she, this woman cannot die. Who will continue doing this? Can I tell you, you can prolong your life using your kindness and benevolence. Your contribution to the program of God can be so significant. God will not allow any devil to take your life. Are we together? This will require you sowing seeds of love, sowing seeds of care, sowing seeds of help to many believers matthew chapter 5 and verse 7 it says blessed are the merciful jesus was teaching he says for they shall obtain mercy galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 there is such a concept as the household of faith it says as we therefore as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men. Say, do good to all men. Then it says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Can I tell you, you have heard me say it, but let me repeat it. If your absence is not missed, it means that your presence was not contributing much. You know that you are an active contributor to the program of God because people should be able to detect your absence. Where is that lady who always smiles on Sunday, whose glow can even, if you are sad and you look at that lady, where is she? And someone says she lost her mom. You say, well, I don't know her, but let me know where. Can I send something to that lady? Believers are quick to wrap their hands around people who become active contributors to the growth of others. There are others, listen to what I'm telling you. This is very powerful. It is a terrible thing to not have a friend, to not have somebody who loves you and believes in you, who can cry. You see believers go through situations alone. No. Let me repeat number four again for emphasis. Seek comfort, prayers, and help from godly friends and then from the family of believers. It's a culture in this ministry to make sure that all who are genuinely connected to this ministry as much as possible are shown the care and the love that is needed as much as God can grant us grace to do. I do not believe in using people. I believe in people being blessed. And for as long as God grants us the grace, we'll continue to extend hands of love and benevolence all wise as much as God grants us grace. Hallelujah. Growing up, I used to wonder why our parents and elderly people, every wedding you see them there, every burial. And you are wondering, what, is it that you know everybody? They return back and they say, I'm traveling somewhere. Who is getting married again? Uh, one woman like this, I used to know her in 1971. I heard that her last one is getting married. And that's why you are traveling to the south. They return back. They are moving from pillar to post. And in our foolishness as children, we thought they were just wasting time. Can I tell you, you know how much you are invest, you've invested in people because like Gideon, when you blow that trumpet, 33,000 people should show up. Why are you crying? My child has not been able to go to school. No, not under my watch. 
please allow this i will leave this child's education to me i remember when i was in primary school i remember you were there for me can i tell you the truth the law of seed time and harvest works powerfully powerfully there are many today your carelessness of yesterday has become a padlock to your destiny it locked your destiny and threw the key away that every time you want to move the memories of your carelessness of yesteryears, I'm praying in this service in the name of Jesus that the God of all mercy will show someone mercy. Yeah. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Yeah. The body of believers. Don't just be an attendant. Be connected genuinely in truth. There is always something that you can do to add to the smiles of believers and build quality godly relationships how do you do that by being friendly i have taught you and by being an active contributor to the growth of people practice the law of honor don't downplay and demean people and expect them to invest their time and attention during the days of adversity no people will reciprocate based on their perception of who they think you are are we together this is very, very important. As tired as I can be sometimes, there are people, if I see their call and I, I see their text, I will make efforts to get up and respond. Why? Because I love everybody. But the truth is that their participation and their contribution in my life is not at the same level. Are we together now? Yes. What investments are you making now for those days? Man of God, does somebody believe in you enough to say I will never watch you in shame? No matter what it is, I will come and wrap my arms around you and make sure that I stand by you to see that this rent issue or this financial issue gets out of the way. Can I tell you, depending on yourself by yourself to come out of affliction and challenges may end up burying you there. Sometimes you will need, even if you are Jesus, you will need Simon of Cyrene to help you carry that cross to Golgotha. And woe betides even a savior who does not have help. Is someone learning? Build godly relationships. Be kind. Be loving. Don't just be anointed. Don't just be a prayer warrior. Don't just be a word giant. In the face of affliction, people do not care. I have taught you, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People will not come to help you just because you're a prayer giant, just because you're a word giant. Sometimes it's that sense of compassion and honor and empathy and you will be surprised how people will arise to come to your rescue. May you never lack helpers. I'm prophesying to you that in the name of Jesus Christ, may you never lack helpers. That at every point in your life, may there be someone who can arise genuinely and sincerely. I've taught you in discussing destiny helpers, let me do a one minute recap. I've taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run through them very quickly. Number one, they first are called divine connectors. They do not have the solution to your challenges, but they know who has that solution. And they always are bridges. For instance, the slave girl connecting Naaman to Elisha. Divine connectors do not have the power to solve your problem, but they know somebody who knows somebody who can connect you. And statistics tells us that everybody is maximum of four people away from where your solutions are. No matter how serious that problem is, four people strategically arranged will connect you and your solution. Number two, men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers, men of influence. These are men who have the credibility, they have the track record, they have the ears of the territory. Their endorsement about you and their speaking over you can rewrite age-long narratives in a moment. One person can sign a signature and say, truly, this man is supposed to go to prison, but at my influence, I write something and that's it can I tell you God still works with men who, and there are men who are gatekeepers whether they are believers or not I've told you that there are gatekeepers you don't cast away God grants you favor to be able to pass through them 
Some of you have been grounded at this point. Afflictions have remained indefinite in your life because you do not understand the power of destiny relationships, the power of destiny helpers, men of influence. One person, his signature can give you a job. His signature can veto whatever limitation and grant you access. Everything you see on earth is controlled by men. Behind every system is a man. And that man has a will, he has an emotion. Even if he's the unrighteous judge that was in Luke 18. A man who does not fear God nor regard men. That's a dangerous man. May you never meet such a man in your life. I say, may you never meet such a man in your life. A man that does not fear God and does not regard men. You can't talk to him about God. You can't bribe. You can't do anything. You are in trouble. Does not fear God. Does not regard men. But the Bible says a weak woman came and used a strategy to weary that man away until he avenged her adversaries. There is always a man behind every system on earth. And let me tell you, when God wants to help you, he gives you access to great men. Don't insult great men. Don't insult rich men. Don't insult people who have paid the price to rise to certain positions. Rather, obtain wisdom by God and say that God should strategically position you. Joseph, you need Pharaoh to manifest your destiny. Daniel, you need Darius, you need Nebuchadnezzar to manifest your destiny. And these are systems and people who God himself recognizes. Are we together now? Number three, you need gifted men. I'm teaching, I'm just doing a quick recap on destiny helpers to buttress point four you need gifted men especially for many of us here who are businessmen or even men in ministry one gifted person can save you financial leakages one gifted person can bring efficiency to your life beyond your imagination the best corporations in the world sometimes are behind them are a few intelligent people who are making global impact redefining civilization the whole corporation is sharing the glory but the truth is that the brains behind them may not be more than four or five gifted men finally and maybe not most importantly, but more importantly, burden bearers. I told you that the assignment, burden bearers are not after your titles. They are not after whoever or whatever you are. They are after you as a person. Burden bearers may not be able to move you forward, but they have an assignment to stop you from going back. These are men who will cry with you. These are people who will see your nakedness and still cover you and cry with you. May God send burden bearers to your life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.